Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity C Sharp bite size tutorial. So obviously this is the new type of video that I'm trying out, but I got some pretty good feedback on the previous video and people seem to really enjoy it. The main change I'm going to try and make is to get the video below the 10 minute mark. Today's video is all about what properties are and how to use them as accesses to your fields. I hope you all enjoy, let's get started. I don't think it's worth splitting this video up into steps since it's all just about properties and we're going to spend most of our time in Visual Studio itself. But what I've done is, uh, on the player object, so I've, I've duplicated the tutorial, okay, so we've got a callbacks now for previous video and properties for this video. And here in scripts, I've made a properties example script that we're going to be working in today. If you want access to the project, the link to my GitHub is down below. Go down there and you'll see a Unity C Sharp bite size project and you can go download that and have a look through. So for this video, I'm assuming you know about fields and fields are just variables. So for example, we have a public int health here. I've set it equal to 10 and then in Unity, we've actually got it over here. And I've done the same for speed, except it's private, but it's using serialized field. Now, if you want something, a video about all this, then I can let me know down below. But today I'm going to assume you know what this is. Okay, so what is a property? Well, a property is really just a field and a method, depending on how you use it. So first of all, we have an auto property. The reason it's called auto is because it handles some of the work for you, because it knows, I've just said it's a public int hell, get set. Now, by default, when you have fields, you can get them and you can set them. So there is no difference here really to a normal field, okay, apart from it just looks a little bit different. Now, you might have seen in some like Java or maybe even some C Sharp stuff, people will write a get method to return a field and a set method to set a field. This is doing that kind of for you. It's a shorthand way of writing it. And this just basically means if you try and use this variable from somewhere else, you can get it and set it. Whereas if you remove get, this isn't possible. There is no way to have a variable that you can set but not get, but the other way around works. So you can have just a getter, which means that you know this value exists and you can read it from elsewhere. But just having a getter means that you actually can't change it in this class. If you want to be able to get it externally, but then only set it internally, it has to be a get private set, okay? So you're telling it, the get assumes it's public because it's a public variable, so that's default. And then you're saying specifically that the set is private, meaning, as I've said multiple times, you can get the health value, you can read it from anywhere else, but you can only set it privately, which means inside of this class. Then the second example with a backing field is where you have a property that acts not actually as storing a value, but acts as um, a way for you to interact with a value. So as I said, by default, you can get a field, you can set a field. And with a auto property that's just get set, you can get it and you can set it. But what if you've got a scenario where, for example, you want to be able to read speed and then you want to be able to set speed. But when you set speed, something else happens too. It's not just a case of setting a variable, maybe some other functions called and some other check happens or whatever. Well, in that case, you actually write that logic in here. So this is basically saying, okay, we have a private int speed. Now, the reason it's grayed out is because the way I'm using it right here is the exact same as when we had the auto property before. And it's telling us, use auto property. Now, if I say control.enter, it actually just does that for us. But that's not what we want to do here. We want some custom logic. So imagine, imagine, when we want to get speed, we just return speed. Okay, so when we ask for uppercase speed, it actually just returns this value. But when we try and set it, what do we do? Instead of just setting it to the value, let's do something else. So if I go like this, and then we wanna say uh, speed equals value plus one. Okay, this is just an example. So that means that now, whenever we try and set speed to be something, it will set it to be one higher than that. So this is just some custom logic in between. Now I could have made a public void and called it set speed or something like that. Okay, set speed. And it takes in, you know, the new integer of speed. And then what I do is I just say speed equals speed. Now, because they're both called the same thing, I need to actually say this dot to refer that, to say that this is the speed inside here and this speed is this one. So this is the same way, actually, well, if I wanted to do it, how I've got it here, okay, this is what it is. But there's no point writing an entire method for it if we can just nicely use a property like this. Keep in mind the same is true when getting, you can actually do the same thing. Um, it's not just the case for actually, um, setting so we can say instead of return speed I can say return speed plus one or I can say maybe speed plus equals one or does it, the way of doing that is speed plus plus so I say whenever I retrieve speed increase it by one and then return it so that's a quick explanation of what they are and how they work but now you know you might want to know some practical uses of it so here we have a private int health so this stores an integer for our health inside this class and then we have a method to actually reduce the health and what if we want to keep this so this class can modify health but externally we can read it, but we want to make sure we can't write it. So you could make a method that returns it, or we can use a property. 
So here I've got a reference to a properties example. So if I go into this and say dot health, it's not there, okay? I think it actually tells you if you mouse over that it's inaccessible due to protection level, it's private. Now if I made it public, I could do stuff with it. I can change it if I want to. I can subtract one from it. Now I want to be able to protect this variable effectively so that external classes cannot modify it. So what I can do with this private, so let's make it back private. So remember, I still want it to be private, but I want to be able to read it from here. So the way I'd do that is I'd make a property. Okay, so public int health. Now there's a shorthand way of doing this. If your property is just to return a value, you can do equals greater than. So it's saying uh, basically go get health. So big health returns lowercase health. This will tell us in a second that we can use an auto property. So it's going to look like this. Just like I said earlier, the get private set. So remember we can modify it inside this class. Then down here, I can actually read it. So I'm trying to modify it here. That's not going to work. But imagine I had a variable called a int a equals, and I can say this dot health. So I can actually read the value and use it. Now it's always nice to be able to use an auto property, but sometimes you can't because what if your variable is something you want to see in the inspector? So that means you have to use a serialized field private float. Let's go with speed. Okay. And uh, we'll set that equal to five. Now, the reason why you can't use an auto property here is because Unity doesn't know how to show properties in the inspector. You have to use fields. So this is our field speed. And internally, we want to be able to change it. Okay. And then down here, we want to be able to read it. Let's go uppercase speed. So now we have to actually use the getter that I showed you earlier. So I'll make a public float speed returns speed. And then I'll make sure this is a float so it's happy. Okay. And there we go. So now we can actually set this in the inspector. So it's changeable there, it's changeable in the script, but anyone else that tries to access it can only get it. You actually see here, it does say get. If we try set it, then, you know, properties example dot speed uh, equals 10 or something or 10F. It's not gonna work, you know, it's protected. So this is one of the main uses of properties is to protect variables and make sure that they only changed where they should be changed. So I mentioned that properties are kind of like methods because they can run logic in them rather than just returning a value or setting a value. That's true, but just remember properties can't take any parameters in. So for example, if I needed a method to get the speed, but it required me to pass something else in, I can't do that, right? There's no way to pass a parameter into a property. You would have to write a method for that if whatever you're trying to get requires you to tell it something. Same when you're setting a variable, if you need to pass in two parameters for some reason, then you can't use a property. It's just for when you're reading it and when you're writing it. So in Unity, the main use I've actually found of it is for making read-only things. So for example, uh, in a scriptable object, you will have lots of fields to set. So you might wanna set some color, some number, some string, you know, loads of stuff on this object, loads of data. But then that data is effectively static. During your gameplay, it never changes. So even though those uh, fields can be modified in the inspector and inside the scriptable object itself, externally, you only want to be able to read it. You want to stop yourself as the programmer or any other programmers working on the project. You, stop, you want to stop them from accidentally changing the value. That's one of the main reasons you do this. I could get away with just leaving this the entire time as, you know, public float speed equals 5f. Okay, and I'm just making sure down here, this is speed. But then the problem is I might accidentally somewhere down here be like uh, speed uh, plus equals one or something. Now, uh, this right here is gonna cause problems because I like might have forgotten that I'd you know, changed the speed down here and nothing's telling me to not do that, right? So if there is a scenario where you know this value should not be changed externally, then make sure to use properties like this. The final useful example that I can think of is using it for caching. So for example, over here, I want to cache the main camera. I don't want to get it every frame because that's very inefficient. So I might use, for example, a property like this. And what it does is every time I ask for main camera, it'll say, well, if the lowercase main camera, because that's the backing field, if that does not equal null, so if it exists, then return it. If it doesn't exist because it's null for a reason, then return. Now, the way I've got this written is it actually returns the value as well as setting it at the same time. So it's just a nice way to do this in two lines rather than three. It goes gets camera.main. Now for this particular example, for getting camera.main, you'd probably just get it in the start method or the awake method, though I'd recommend start, it's safer. And you'd actually um, be fine with that, to be honest. You don't need to use this, but there are quite a lot of scenarios. And if you've watched my other videos, you'll have seen scenarios where I use getters like this uh, internally. Now. This works internally because I've set them both to be private. So it's just useful if I ever want to refer to the main camera. I don't have to write this every single time or write a method for this. It's just here in the property. But obviously I might want to access this externally. So you just have to make this public, but keep uh, this private. 
But yeah, so I want to keep this video short. That's pretty much it. I've covered the main uses of properties, okay? So you use it mainly for making things read-only, for caching, and just as a nicer way to not have to write loads of big methods and write, you know, get this, get set that, whatever. You just write what you need. So if a variable is only read, then just go with get. And if it's a read and write, then go with get and set. If you need to write extra logic, for example, when you set the player's health, you want to check if it's below a zero, then set it equal to zero. That logic can be done in there. It's up to you. If there was anything else in this video that you want me to make a separate video on, so for example, fields or maybe even uh, property accesses, so like public, private, protected, that kind of thing. I did a video on it about a year or two ago, but it's very old, so I should probably do an update in this series. If you do want that, then let me know. So yeah, if you like the video, then please leave a like and subscribe. It would help a lot. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time, and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to John Saluk, Liz Kimber, David McDermott, Exit Return Zero, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Yoris Letter, Hades Zorko, Rene, Buddha Ray, and Murmury Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by following on any of those, checking any of those out, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.